Uh, you're too cryptic. Uh, uh, because the location is one that, that has been made too hot for the police to go into. Oh, so it's a, a no-go zone. That, that it's one a mess. block where four cops yeah. go down in one month, I'm yeah. sorry. That's, yeah. that's not. It's it, called stay out of here. It's, that's definitely an yeah. inducement to not be there. Um, we, we have uh, friends. In fact, it's um, Deborah and, and Lou Tavares. Yes. And Deborah and Lou uh, were builders in Los Angeles for a long time, and they own property down there, like um, condo, private communities, and stuff like that. I don't know what the whole arrangement is, but they, they have uh, three or four down in L.A., and she said one of them, they keep getting water leaks in the pipes. They're pinholes all over in that building. And it's like once a month. And I said, you know, that's happening in other states to property owners. That's funny, and Mike. That happened in my daughter's apartment building. It flooded four apartments. The side of the pipe just blew off. They couldn't. They've never seen anything like it. Right. I, I think it's. It. I think it's harp, or EMF technologies they're using to, um, to uh, steal people's property. What about tritium? If tritium gets into our water supply, it's my understanding tritium cannot be shielded. It goes through all metals. And if we have areas where there's a buildup of hydrogen in a lattice in metal, could that tritium also cause embrittlement? Oh, it does, for sure. I mean, it's, it happens at nuke plants all the time, but I mean... It shouldn't be there. That's, that's, it shouldn't be there. That's why it causes embrittling. It, it messes up the integrity of the crystal matrix, the atomic matrix. Yeah, the inner spaces get misallocated. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so it causes stress there, and that weakens the metal. It, it embrittles it. Now, tritium, the only way you can store it, because we used to handle it at the nuke lab, it has to be stored on a bed of uranium. In other words, <laughs> you take pure uranium and you put it in a container, and the uh, tritium attaches to it. When you want to take remove the tritium you have to heat it up i think that's how you drive it off of the uranium bed you break the molecular bonds but you can't store it in metal bottles you can't store it in glass bottles uh, because it goes right through the structure of the walls whatever material it is it goes right through metal it goes right through glass it goes through everything because the the atoms are so tiny and they're very mobile and um, uh, so, of course, it's embrittling. But the worst thing about tritium is the biological effects. And it can be a gas. That's the least dangerous, although it's all dangerous. It can be attached to water. That's 25,000 times more than um, as a gas. And then it can be attached to protein, and then it's 125,000 times worse than gas biologically. And the terrible thing is that it has a very long biological half-life, which is different from the physical half-life. And it can persist in everything like you wrote in your outline for much longer, and the worst thing is that it's, um, it causes infertility. The next news item, April 31st of 2014, plane struck by three lightning bolts at once. This was in Amsterdam. And then it happened again May 19th in Florida. In fact, a woman was filming inside the plane when it occurred, and I have the video for that. I'm sorry, I missed what, what happened. To plane, begin. First, a, a plane was struck by three lightning bolts at once in Amsterdam, and then it happened again May 19th in Florida, and there was a statement made in this article that appeared on the Huffington Post. It said, according to experts, 
the average year any given airliner can expect to be struck at least once on its travels. Indeed, as the fuselage of most planes is made of conductive aluminum, their presence in storm clouds, where huge amounts of static electricity gather, can actually trigger the discharge. But due to strict regulations, all passenger planes must be built with electrical shielding, which protects the inside of the plane from the effects. Now, they had stated in this article, you know, that it's pretty rare once, once a year for each plane. But as I started searching through Google, I was seeing this happens a lot. In fact, it happened to the Prime Minister of France. Let me see where I have that. Oh, well, he deserves it. <laughs> How long ago did it happen? Um, in, in 2012. He was on his way to visit Angela Merkel, and in fact, it scorched the plane. The plane had to make an emergency landing. So could the radiation in the skies be contributing to that at all? Or is it too hard to tell without examining the plane directly? I would have to do more research on that. I, I actually, I don't even know if I've ever heard of lightning hitting a plane. I've been on a plane flying through a lot of lightning lots of times. Lightning hits them. It happens. It does happen. Other electrical problems or glitches. There was a huge construction electrocution accident that happened in Brazil to workers at the World Cup Stadium on May 8th of 2014. I read about that. And it had happened to a, a couple of workers over a number of weeks and in 2012 a worker had died at the construction site as well in Brasilia. Three workers had died in San Paulo in two separate accidents and three had been killed from injuries suffered at the Arena de Amazonia in the jungle city of Manaus. And I've tracked a few other electrical uh, anomalies, I guess you would call them, kids being electric electrocuted in pools in Florida. Oh. And I thought that might also be worth tracking those events. Wow. Electrocuted in pools is a whole other story. Yeah, that's not the radiation. Yeah. That's that's something else. Improper grounding, faulty yeah. wiring. Yeah. Shorts. We've had a number of transformer fires. A, a big one in Santa Monica that happened May 15th of 2014. That could be, that could be Vigner. It could be overloading. Overloading. We've had a number of these transformer fires and explosions in the past two years happening in big cities, some blowing multiple manhole covers off. It's happened in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and London. And we have videos of all of those on YouTube from security cameras or, or so forth. So what, um, again, something that needs to be looked at further from electrical engineers, perhaps for grid overload, yeah, at least, um, well, we could look around, and, and um, Larry knows more than I do about that, but we could certainly investigate that. We've had a number of cable cables breaking on roller coasters. The most recent one happened at Cedar Point, which is near me in Ohio, uh -huh. uh, July 27th, where a ride that swung people as high as 120 feet had a cable snap which injured a number of people. Um, this was, this park says that the ride was closed in 2013 for another reason unrelated to this cable breaking. But we've also had a, a few stuck roller coasters, a recent one at SeaWorld, and that was attributed to hydraulics. Uh, is it, could this be maintenance issues? Could this be? It sounds like, um you know the walkways that people walk through from the terminal onto the plane? Those have been collapsing. That's hydraulics. Yes, most recently that happened at SeaTac. Right. Uh, jetway collapsed at SeaTac. Jetway, yeah. Jetway, and the incident, um, say a mechanical failure caused it to drop about six feet. Hydraulics. Mm -hmm. See what they're going to have to do, for instance, on planes where the rubber hoses are, which uh, provide flexibility in the system. They're going to have to use solid metal pipes 
uh, stainless steel or whatever. And then that adds weight to the plane and it also cuts down on flexibility, but it avoids the Wigner effects or it, it modifies them. All right, I have another good one I have to look up here. Glass shattered observation deck. I think it was the Willis Tower uh, in Chicago. Let me find it real quick. <coughs> yeah, this was scary. You know the, the ones that you can walk out? Yes, I, I'm just sitting here thinking of all the ones I've been out on and going, I don't think I want to be here. <laughs> yeah, the Chicago Willis Tower in July, an observation deck where people can walk out and look down at the city shattered while two people were standing on it. They were able to get back into the building. It sounds like some kind of energy phenomenon hit it. Yeah. In Chicago, they shoot guns all the time. July 2nd, Brooklyn Bridge facade collapses, injuring five. Authorities say a section of the facade inside an underpass of the Brooklyn Bridge had collapsed. It was involving a roughly 25-foot wide section. Wow. Well, the Brooklyn Bridge has had the opportunity to collect Wigner ever since the very beginning. Yep. Yeah. And you know all those hurricanes that hit New York and, and Long Island, and those were all very radioactive. Hurricane Sandy? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I have one more. I had a Russian rocket carrying the most advanced satellite payload that crashed, but I don't know. I, I know there's been more of them, and I haven't collected all of them, so maybe I won't ask about that. Could be sabotage, maybe? Well, uh, very recently, a rocket carrying a satellite um, to put the Internet, I think, to make the internet accessible to the common people in Russia, uh, out in the countryside, that rat rocket crashed, uh, or it was it, it was shot down or something. It had a strange failure and it it crashed. Okay, and the last anomaly was from May fifth of twenty fourteen. Authorities were trying to determine what caused a support frame to collapse during an aerial hair-hanging stunt during a circus performance, and they focused on a broken clip. The four to five inch steel clip was found in three pieces on the ground with its spine snapped. Providence Public Safety Commissioner Steve Perry said, we don't know if it was metal fatigue, if it wasn't properly positioned, or something else. We just don't know. Metal fatigue. Three places. Metal fatigue or something else. And I think some of the women that were injured are actually still in the hospital. They had severe injuries well, from that accident. What indicators do we have with everything that we've talked about today and since the Fukushima accident occurred, that aircraft and infrastructure may be exhibiting signs of accelerated metal and glass fatigue and corrosion? Okay, so what we're, what we're looking at, what is an indicator? The Fukushima disaster happened in 2011, March of 2011. And what can be expected is to see a rise in the incidence of infrastructure failure over time that will accelerate as time goes on because it's a cumulative effect. Daily releases are continuing. This has been three years of accumulated radiation damage. And so it's going to increase eventually exponentially. And that's the pattern we're seeing. You'll see that increase both in frequency and in magnitude of event. Yes, and also it's global. That indicates an environmental cause. We just came down the stairs. And the little sea lions are being washed onto shore, dying. Here's one right here. Here's one right here.
Oh my god. Look at this one. 